Hey gamers, Rick here with Game Trade Media. We're doing an amazing unboxing today. We got a special guest. We got Jeff Tidball from Atlas Games today. Jeff, Hello. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be here. Nice. I, I, we appreciate you being here. Tell us a little bit about Atlas Games before we jump into Cogs and Commissaires. Uh, Atlas Games is a small publisher. We do card games and board games and role playing games. Been around for 25 or 30 years mm -hmm. since the founder started making stuff. John Nephew in uh, college, and he okay. wrote for Dragon Magazine before then. He's been in the business since All the right. beginning of time. Beginning of time. I think I. I'm missing like three Dragon magazines and I'll have a complete run. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because that's my jam. Well, you'll find his work in there. He started yeah. writing for that in high school. Oh, my God. Yeah, they did They did recruit early. You know, <laughs> that's right. Back back in the day. Um, so tell us about Cogs and Commissars. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, Cogs and Commissars. This okay. is a, a card game of robot revolution. So there are different uh, factions, uh, different Soviet-style robot leaders. You okay. will be one of them, and you'll uh, compete to recruit citizens and then play your revolution card, and that's how you win. Nice. Should we okay. look at the pieces? Yes, let's, let's please. Awesome. All right. Comes with a rule book, obviously. You gotta know what to do. You don't have to know what to do, I will explain. All right? So there's two sort of kind of basic components. There are uh, card decks. So the game comes with six robot factions that are pre-built. So you're okay. a faction, if you're Simulenin, you've got a, a faction card that it has got your unique special ability on okay. it. And then you've got a deck of 40 cards okay. that is your unique deck. So this is a kind of like a custom build, almost CCG or living mm -hmm. card game style, except okay. that it's not a collectible game per se. You don't have to buy anything else. Everything right. that you need comes inside the box. And then you got a reference card okay. that reminds you what to do on your turn. So there's just a second stack of them in each one of these wells here okay. to get the total of six. So Computin, Computin. is another uh, one in here. <laughs> so the similarities for most of these decks is every deck has one revolution card, because that's okay. how you win, is to play your revolution. All it's right. got, I think, eight propaganda cards that is kind of the the uh, atomic unit of take that in this game so okay. if I play a propaganda card on you I steal one of your proletariat robots and we'll get to those in a minute okay. and then there's also four counter propagandas in each one if you have one of those in your hand you can tell mm -hmm. me to go take a hike when I play okay. a propaganda on you so there's this little mini game okay. of propagandizing your robots and counter propagandizing to prevent that from happening all right nice so then the rest of each player's deck is filled out by all of the other stuff that you can do uh, inside the game. So each one of the decks is, is different from that right. perspective. So there's six different ones here. Okay. The other faction leaders, we've got uh, Auto Marks here. The uh, Artificial Style Intelligence has got a deck. Uh, Gorobachev, Gorobachev has got a deck. <laughs> and Androidopov has nice. got a deck. So those are all different things. They each have a different special ability that interacts well with the way that their card decks are built. Okay. Now, the other way that you can play this game is as a drafting game. So you can play the drafting game with or without the robot leaders, but then you uh, everybody starts with those revolution propagandas and counter-propagandas, okay. and then you just do draft. You do a random set of uh, eight or ten cards, I think. Okay. Pick one, pass the rest. So you can build your own deck out of the different capabilities that the other different cards have. So nice. if you've got people in your group who are CCG players or who like doing draft-style tournaments at mm -hmm. stores, they play Magic or they play other... CCG that has right. that drafting mechanic. That is a really fun way to play this game. What we discovered nice. when we were developing this is that if you don't know the card set already, you can't make any sensible decisions about drafting. Okay. And so that's why we wind up with these pre-constructed decks so there's an easy way in or for people who are just not interested in that depth. Sure. So the game kind of revolves around stealing these citizens from each other. So there's three kinds of citizens. Okay. There are commissars, they are worth three points, and so they are kind of three units wide. Okay. There are bourgeoisie robots. They bourgeoisie. are two units wide. <laughs> so we got a whole bird. bunch of those. And then there are proletarian robots. They are one unit wide. Uh, the like bees. so. Now, so they are of different values. So you got one, two, and three, and so it's easy to see how many points somebody has because you can just stack them up and count those pretty easily. Sure. But you cannot make change. <laughs> you okay. cannot head to the factory and turn one commissar into three proletarians by chopping it up into thirds. Right. So there are some interesting mechanics in terms of which kind of citizens can you affect with a given card, okay. uh, because that will have an impact on how many points that costs. But a card that lets me kill a commissar does not let me kill three proletarians. If you don't have any commissars, mm -hmm. and I've got a card that lets me kill a commissar, I am out of luck sure. in terms of affecting you with that card. Okay. So the, the goal of the game is to accumulate 
15 points were the citizens, and then play your revolution. So there's a little bit of gameplay there. Okay. If you don't have your revolution in your hand, you're going to have to use cards that dig through your deck. Right. Now, the decks are very small. They're only uh, 30 cards, I think. And so you will go through your deck multiple times. You're going to play often four, five, six, even seven cards on your turn. So oh, wow. part of the gameplay is also how fast do you want to burn through cards. You've got a step here where you can discard and draw. You can dump up to your whole seven-card hand per turn and wow. burn through that deck very quickly. So like if you draw your revolution card on the first turn, no problem, just send it back into your deck and you'll mm -hmm. get it again a couple of turns later once yeah. you've uh, built up the, the citizens that you need. So there's, there's two different kinds of cards. Some of them have uh, this gear symbol mm -hmm. on them. These are action cards, so you're generally limited to playing one action card on your turn, but there okay. are a ton of cards that are blitz cards, so they've got this blue symbol on mm -hmm. them. Those are cards that you can play at any time, literally at any time in the game. If it's oh, your wow. turn, I can throw that in. Okay. There's a, if there's ever a timing problem, there's a timing stack, sort of like Magic, where later cards in will resolve first. Okay. But this has some really, really amazing blitz cards. Some of them let you change the text on other cards that have been played. So if I've got that higher assassin card that right. I want to play in order to kill one of your commissars, there's another card that lets a player swap in one of the other citizen types. So to just change the word commissar on that card into proletariat. Right. So you could actually use that as a defense. If you don't want me to kill one of your three-point commissars, mm -hmm. you can swap in the fact that it only kills proletariats and save yourself two points right. by playing that card. Or nice. there's another card, and this is my favorite card in the entire thing it changes the word counter to the word duplicate. So mm. if I play a um, propaganda on you to steal one of your proletariats, you counter that, I can play a card that turns your counter into a duplicate and let me steal two proletariats wow. from you. So it just swaps that word duplicate in, so you have now duplicated my propaganda and let me do it twice as much. Nice. And so there's lots of, this game is especially good at that back and forth play with these blitz cards right. that makes it uh, really fun and really interactive instead of where you just sit here while five people right. take their turns. Oh yeah, that can be uh, trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the things I really like about it, too, is the artwork is so fun. Uh, it is very reminiscent of the propaganda art of, like, World War II. And you said uh, uh, the artist to this was uh, a gentleman from where? Uh, Macedonia, wow. if I'm That's wrong. amazing. That's, that's... It's great, you know, so since everybody's got portfolios mm -hmm. online, it's very uh, easy to, I don't want to oversell how easy it is, but you can work with people from all around the world, and right. it, it is possible to find out who they are and find just the right style. It's not like every Tom, right. Dick, and Harry card artist is working in a right. Soviet industrialist <laughs> style, <Right. laughs> but uh, obviously that's the right style for this game, and we Absolutely. were able to find somebody to do it, so it's uh, it was great to work with him. He did a great job. And how much is this? Uh, this game is $25. $25 for a game that you can play over and over again. That is a great holiday gift, because it looks like it could fit in my stocking, mm -hmm. if I were to just take my sock off. This would, <laughs> 10 of these would fit in my sock. Uh, so the, what a great gift to give to, to uh, your family members that are into gaming and uh, maybe even like a little history and have a little fun with history. Right. Because uh, this is absolutely hitting those marks. Gulag. <laughs> what a great word. That's right. <laughs> for such a horrible thing. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for bringing and showing us uh, Cogs and Commissars. And this is available now at local game stores? Or uh, middle of November. November 15th is okay. the street date. All right. So right there, just before the holidays. And uh, everybody should pick it up. It should be, like, number one on your list next to the white box. We've talked about that as well. <laughs> That's another right. thing that they make. The white box. Very important. Check those videos out. All right. So uh, this has been another one of our unboxings here at Game Trade Media. I'm Rick. And I'm Jeff. And we appreciate you being here, Jeff. Thanks, Rick. We'll see you at the game store.